Okay, in this video I'm going to discuss what happens in a weak acid strong base titration at the equivalent. In my opinion, this is the toughest point along the titration curve, is to determine what the pH is at that equivalence point. So, let's first talk about what the equivalence point means, and that should just be singular. At the equivalence point, the moles of the acid, in this case HN3, and the moles of the base, NaOH will be equal. So let's start and figure out how many moles of our acid do we have. We have 20 milliliters of the solution. There's a thousand milliliters in a liter. And the molarity tells us that for every one liter of the solution we have 0 0.2 moles of HN3. That means our total number of moles is 0 0.004. So we need to have the same number of moles of the sodium hydroxide because at the equivalence point, base and acid are equal. So let's determine how many milliliters of that solution. We are going to need this information. So we know that we need to have 0 0.04 moles of the sodium hydroxide because at the equivalence point, they're equal. Our molarity tells us that there's 0.1 moles of the sodium hydroxide in every liter of the solution. And one liter of the solution contains 1,000 milliliters. So we need 40 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide solution. We will need that information in the future. All right. So let's determine what is really happening at the equivalence point. We're going to take our acid and react it with sodium hydroxide. It's really important to note that whenever you have anything strong, strong acid or strong base in the reaction, it's going to be a reaction. It's not an equilibrium. Whenever you have anything strong, it is a reaction, not equilibrium. That means you need an IC final table. So let's talk about what's happening during the course of this reaction. We have weak acid, HN3, reacting with strong base, NaOH. And just to simplify things, Na is really a cation that doesn't participate in the reaction. It doesn't affect the pH at all. So to just simplify things, we're just going to leave out that spectator ion. The hydroxide is really the base that's doing the work. So let's predict the products of this reaction. This is a base. Bases like to deprotonate acids. This is an acid. It's going to donate its proton to the base. So when the hydroxide takes the proton from HN3, we form water. And what's left over, the conjugate base of this HN3 after it loses its proton, is N3 minus. So it's a reaction. We're going to talk about this in terms of moles in an IC final table. So our initial number of moles is 0 0.004. And because we are at the equivalence point, the question stated, what happens at the equivalence point? We have an equal number of moles of the base. Uh, we don't really care about water. It doesn't really have an impact on our pH. It's just there as a solvent. Uh, so we don't really care what happens to it. We have initially zero and three minus. Now when you're looking at an IC final table, you're really talking about what is the limiting reagent? What happens during the course of the reaction? What's used up? At the equivalence point, we're at this perfect place where nothing is limiting and nothing is in excess. We have exactly equal amounts. So during the course of the reaction, all of the HN3 is going to go away. All of the hydroxide is going to go away. And we're going to gain that same amount in the conjugate base N3 minus. So final, after the reaction has occurred, we have no HN3. We have no hydroxide, but we do have some N3 minus. Let's talk about the final molarity. This is where this 40 milliliters is going to come into play. We started with 20 milliliters of the acid, and we dripped into it 40 milliliters of the base. So we have 60 milliliters total. That means we have 0 0.06 liters total. So the final molarity, zero for the acid, zero for the base, 
and moles over liters gives us molarity 004 over 06, 0 0.0667 0 molar. Now, the hardest part of this is to recognize that this compound, N3 minus, is a base. We know it's a base because it's a conjugate of a weak acid. So weak acid HN3, conjugate base N3 minus. So it's not so simple to say what the pH is. We need another ice table to see what happens when we put this into water because it's going to produce hydroxide because it's a base. So now, this is why I said this is the hardest part. We need an ice table. So we have weak base, N3 minus, reacting with water. It's an ice table, it's at equilibrium. So let's predict the products. This is the base. It's gonna pull a proton off of water. That gives us HN3. And after water donates its proton, we get hydroxide. And our ICE table, IC equilibrium, our initial concentration of N3 minus is 0 0.0667. We don't really care about water. It doesn't appear in the KB expression because it's a pure liquid. Um, our initial concentration of HN3 is zero. Our initial concentration of hydroxide is zero. The equilibrium is gonna shift to the right because we have no products. So we're gonna subtract X and it's one X because the coefficient is one. We're gonna gain an x, coefficient is one. We're gonna gain an x, coefficient is one. So at equilibrium, we have 0 0.0667 minus x, x, and x. Let's talk about the KB expression. Now this is gonna be a KB because this is a base. We produce hydroxide, so we need a KB. The KB expression, just like any other equilibrium, is products over reactants to their orders. So our products are HN3 raised to the order of one, because its coefficient is one, hydroxide to the first divided by N3 minus to the first. Water is already included in our KB expression. All right, so we're ready to start plugging things in, but we don't have a KB. Now this is a little bit of a thing you just have to remember. KW is equal to KA times KB for conjugate pairs. If you know the KA of an acid, you know the KB of its conjugate. We have the KA for HN3. We can determine the KB for N3 minus. So we have 1 times 10 to the minus 14th is equal to that Ka, 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5 times Kb. So we can solve for Kb, and I got that Kb was equal to 5.26 times 10 to the minus 10th. So we are ready to plug things into that expression. So. 5.26 times 10 to the minus 10th equals x squared divided by 0 0.0667. Remember, we've made the assumption. We're going to assume that the change in x is negligible. So at equilibrium, our concentration of N3 minus is about 0 0.0667. Solving for x, that equals 5.92 times 10 to the minus sixth. Oh, whenever you make the assumption, it's good to double check your assumption to assure that you have not um, made a val an invalid assumption. And how you check it is you put x, 5.92 times 10 to the minus sixth, divided by your initial concentration, times 100. And so this is 0.0089%. So yes. Our assumption is completely valid. Our change in X is less than 5% of our initial concentration. Now, let's figure out what this X means. This X is giving us the concentration of hydroxide. The concentration of hydroxide will govern what the pH is. So we know 
that the concentration of hydroxide is 5.92 times 10 to the minus 6. From that, we can determine the pOH. pOH is the negative log of the OH concentration. So the pOH for this solution is 5.23. And the pH is 14 minus pOH 5.23. Gives us a constant uh, pH of 8.77. And this makes sense. Whenever you have a weak acid with a strong base on the titration curve, the equivalence point will be basic. It will be basic because you've generated the conjugate base of that weak acid.